in demanding accountability. For it is the lack of demand for accountability that worsened governance over a period of 53 years in this nation. The freedom that democracy has given us means that we must ask. We must ask. We will be abused. We will be ridiculed. I read where somebody said she's talking for relevance. And I thought to myself, ah, at this stage, life, I'm looking for relevance. God will say I am an ungrateful person. If my demand for good governance and accountability is about relevance, please, we have failed for too long. The new Nigeria I see is a new Nigeria where accountability for results will be a natural part of the social contract between citizens and those that govern them. I see a new Nigeria, my dear people, in all the entrepreneurs in the fashion industry. When as Minister of Education, we started a reform called Innovation Enterprise Institutions and Vocational Enterprise Institutions. One of the things that I said was that through these institutions, that we would have entrepreneurs in the business of fashion who would establish schools like the New York Fashion Institute of Technology and that we will rule the world of fashion someday. Today, when I look at some of the creations coming out of that sector, I dare say to all of you, watch that space. Because Nigeria will indeed become a major capital of fashion in this world. I see them in entertainment. I see them in entrepreneurship. Oh, I see people like Binga, Adigbesi, and is it something Besi? Yeah, is it? Shasan, Shasan. He runs something called ajegule.com. It is to bring technology to the children in a place that is hardly spoken of. A place where a person like me lived as a young child. Greatness will come out of places that every one of us, because the children that are coming behind us, they are not going to be playing in the league of West Africa. They will be playing in the league of Africa. They will be playing in the global league. To the extent that we do not hurriedly equip them with all the tools they need, to that extent shall we continue to lag. But that will not happen. I see the new Nigeria in the die-hard doggedness of those who failing so many times yet continue to strive. Because they are people in the school of Theodore Roosevelt who said that a life of ignoble ease is a life not worth living. Show me a person of strenuous effort, a person of hard work, a person who would strive and you would show me a person who has the right to the greatness of triumph. I see them. I see a woman, Mama Makoko, more than 25 years of establishing a school in Makoko waters. School on the waters. She has trained many, had the opportunity of meeting her recently. And I looked at this woman on her own. She has trained the children in the slum called Makoko. That is the new Nigeria. The Nigeria that I see is not a Nigeria of 
slothfulness in Nigeria, where we wait that oil may be scooped through other people's technology so that we can have a point over who gets the largest chunk of it. That's the old Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, join me as we step into the new Nigeria. So I have to stay. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, please, we have a few questions for you. Your presentation was awesome. So the first one we'll take is from Twitter. It says, if you are to give three key recommendations as actions for every Nigerian to adopt now to move us closer to the new Nigeria you see, what will they be? Okay. So the first one I already said, every one of us must become knowledgeable about public policy public policy. Governance is about public policy. You cannot see it as someone interested in good governance in Nigeria and not know what you must know about key sectors that matter for the greatness of the nation. I could start by saying what we just talked about Neiti. What is it about Neiti and the petroleum sector. What is this PIB? I must go read it. Because the new Nigeria is a Nigeria of voice. Voice would matter. So that's one. The second thing is going would be the understanding that collaborative partnership is the way of solving problems in the new world. In this world of today, the one man, one woman band is over. The Linus and Co. is over. It doesn't work. There's one new Nigerian that I see here. Bayo Omoboriowo. You know what this young man does? He's documenting the unsung heroines of Nigeria. The everyday market woman, entrepreneur, Taking out a living and yet training about five children through schools. He is not interested in the ones that fly. He's interested in those at the bottom of the pyramid. By your mobile, can you get up? Let them even acknowledge you. <laughs> Collaborative partnership. Why do I say that? You need to connect what these people are doing to what you are doing. You can't work in silos in the world of big problems, needing big solutions, collaborative partnership. And then the third one is investing in your capacity for adaptive leadership. Leadership of this era is not going to be the charismatic leader with a positional authority. No. It's collective leadership. And in societies that have gone through the trauma of collapse of values, that's when adaptive leadership is even merge the solution. Adaptive leadership is a new orientation towards solving problems in ways that will not make the issue about you. So you define leadership outside of yourself. Adaptive leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that understanding that the solutions to our problems 
are so amongst us. 